Lefwin. Welcome Hello. to Inside City Hall. Welcome to Corpus Christi Thank again. You. It's good to see you. Uh, can you just jump right in? Tell us a little about yourself and sure. your organization. Sure. Uh, my name is Lefwin Clark. I'm the Education Director for the Water Collaborative Delivery Association, which is a nonprofit trade association primarily focused on water and wastewater, obviously. Um, and we promote uh, collaborative delivery, which is design, build, and construction management at risk. And a lot like Design Build Institute of America, we're, we're out um, helping cities and utilities figure out how to deliver infrastructure projects, but specifically for water and, and uh, wastewater treatment. So, Now, one of the delivery models that you talk about that your organization mm -hmm. kind of helps people to understand is the progressive design build model. That's the model that we're using in the Inner Harbor Water Treatment mm -hmm. Campus here at Corpus Christi. Can you tell us a little bit more about that delivery model and maybe how that compares or contrasts to other delivery methods we may be more familiar with? Yeah, absolutely. And, and really, it's a matter of what um, what progressive design build isn't, which is the way most uh, utilities and cities have built projects for the last hundred years or so, which I think okay. people know is the bid, the bid process. Yeah, so yeah. you do the design, you get you put that out there and a contractor will give you a number to build it. And, and what's happened with complex projects like your own project is that um, you find out the number is maybe not exactly what you expected. Mm -hmm. You might have, your, your audience might have that when they get a bid on their kitchen or their, right. their renovation on their <laughs> We've house. We've all been there, right? We've all been yeah. there. And so progressive design build has evolved on, particularly on complex projects and particularly in water projects and wastewater where uh, you do the, a little bit more interactively. You design it and price it at the same time, which results in a different um, uh, procurement process, a different way of selecting uh, a single entity that's going to design and build the project at one time. And of course, um, uh, a little bit different than a hard bid project. And so the word progressive comes from the progressive iteration of the design and the cost um, estimate together. And by being able to do that, uh, first of all, you have one party, not just a designer or a, a contractor, mm -hmm. but second of all, you have the ability to iterate as you go. And that's really the, the where the collaboration comes in. Let's figure out our challenges as they happen mm -hmm. uh, instead of, you know, doing everything and then waiting for the bids to come in and then figuring it out. So basically, as we define all those design elements, we're also working through the final price. So the final design and the final price kind of come in yeah they they come the together and and it is that's that's the progressive part of it it is an iterative process and you you sort of know it when you get there sometimes <laughs> it's earlier in the process sometimes it's mm -hmm. it has to go a bit later depending on if you're getting the features you want in the project at the at the um, cost you want to pay for the project and that's that that's sort of the beauty of it is you can you know, some of the early projects got there really quickly and some of these more complex ones take a little bit more work and you just work at it until you arrive at uh, something that's mutually agreeable. So so I would think then that a contract in, a, in the progressive design build process maybe looks a little different. What are some of the unique features of progressive design build contracts? Yeah, there's three or four of them which are really unique. First of all, uh, because you don't have the design yet when you select this entity to design and build the project, you've got to select them a little bit more in their past experience and their references and their ability to develop this cost with you. So uh, you do get a, a pricing or a cost component uh, from the design builder, but you don't get the full-blown construction cost because you haven't um, built it yet. So there's some contract terms around how that uh, evolves. Uh, central to the progressive design build method is the cost part of it, the, the actual cost for the pipes and the two by fours and the concrete are all fully disclosed. We call that open book. And, and that is a contractual requirement. And so unlike a, a hard bid, um, you're allowed and entitled as the owner, as the city, to mm -hmm. see every number as it's progressively built up in the estimate. So that's, those two are the primary ones. There's some other contract terms around, um, how how the price and cost are implemented and and uh, the phasing of the project and and how you progress through it, but it's a very different contract than the traditional public works contract sure. for sure. Yeah, taking a step back, you you referenced this a bit ago, mm. but you were talking about how progressive design build methodology mm -hmm. is now being used in more complex projects. Why is that a better or 
a good match? Why why is that sort of delivery method well matched to a really complex project like the Inner Harbor Water Treatment Campaign? Well, if you think about your own house, if you're doing a, a simple uh, replace a sink versus replacing a kitchen or a wing of your house, there are more decisions to be made. There's more trade-offs. Sometimes you, your eyes can get bigger than your budget and <laughs> you got to scale some things back. Sometimes yeah. you realize your operators or the public needs um, some additional um, elements of the project, whether there are amenities or redundancy or uh, public safety elements. So all of those things can be accounted for during the design process. And, and frankly, it accommodates a lot of change in decision making where um, the design bid build or the traditional process is a little bit more linear and straightforward. Once you've made a decision, you're sort of stuck with it. So right. and then, a lot yeah, more so, flexibility. Yeah. And those, when the more traditional ones, then you're looking at things like change orders, if you're yeah. going to make changes, but this, it all is part of the Natural yeah, process. you can change things, but you have to do it sort of after the fact right. and uh, in the form of a change order where this is a little bit more interactive or, or progressive. So. Okay, yeah. And so for folks that maybe aren't as familiar mm. with this process, what are some of the typical deliverables we could probably expect, expect as we go through the progressive design build process? Yeah, it's a it's an evolution of um, very conceptual design. Hey, we want to put water in one end and and have it come out of something else <laughs> at the different end right. to getting into the details of okay, what does that really mean in terms of the technical criteria? How much water? What what's the quality of the water? What do we do with um, the 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 wastewater that comes from the process? And then you know all along. Those decision points are a cost that you can um, rely on that that indicates what you can afford and what you can't afford. And then as you progress through the design process, you get more and more design detail and down to the doorknobs and the and the hinges and, and that kind of things. And somewhere along the way, you reach that sweet spot of, OK, we're ready to to build this thing for the money we have and, and it's a project we want. And um, you can you can sort of pull the trigger for that construction anywhere along the way, but it's really the city's choice to do that. And so one of the things that I, I understand we get in this sort of process is a cost model. Mm -hmm. Can you help us understand what a cost model is and how that leads us to that ultimately down the road to that final price. Yeah. So again, I contrast it with the traditional delivery. I'll go back to my kitchen analogy. It's one of my favorite ones. You get a, you get a number from a, uh, hopefully from a couple contractors and they sort of tell you what it's going to cost and you wonder why one is higher or lower than the other. Yeah. A cost model is actually uh, peeling back the detail on that and you get to see inside of it What's, what's, what are all the components of what the contractor is buying or assuming they mm -hmm. need to buy to build the thing and how much time and effort and materials and, and labor. And so the structure for that is where the word model comes from, just the framework or organization of the cost estimate. But the, but the real benefit or meaning to you as the city is you get to actually see inside of it, get to understand what's driving the costs, perhaps some requirements you have that um, are, are legacy standards that could be reduced or, or um, adjusted, um, some things you want to add in because, you know, this is drinking water and you're concerned about your ratepayers and the public. So you get to make those decisions and see the real impact. And so Think about going through every drawer and cabinet on your kitchen project and <laughs> deciding uh, what you want, you know, right. countertops to splash guards and everything else. All in the nitty gritty. Yeah, all okay. the nitty gritty. So the cost model is not a number. It's just sort of the formula for how we get to it that It starts number. as the formula and okay. then it becomes populated with the number. And okay. so um, eventually the cost model will mean the number. I think um, in the evolution of things, it starts out as just the framework, right? So you understand okay. where all the different costs are coming from. And that's as important as a way to start as, you know, knowing the number, right? Right. How it's organized and what's in and what's out. Okay. So. And that's kind of where we are in the Inner yeah, Harbor Water Treatment Campus process now. We're just yeah. you know, developing that cost model. So that's going to inform things down the road. Right. And, 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 you know, it's not a perfect process. Uh, I, I talk to a lot of owners who are going through this for the first time. You're going to get more information than you probably have ever seen on hard bid projects. And you're going to have to digest a lot more detail as you go. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to make some decisions. And so there's trade-offs to everything. This collaborative delivery process will 
require some some thought and collaboration on the contractor design builder side and the city side and and uh, figure out how to make this work yeah. and knowing the numbers is is the first step sure so, that makes yeah. sense now it's my understanding that cost and price those are two words that we usually sort of use interchangeably out in the everyday world but in this capacity, cost and price have two different meanings. They do. And, and notice we called it the cost model yes, because yeah. um, everything is coming to the city in this open book or transparent format. Mm -hmm. And it really is supposed to just be what it costs or would cost any contractor or supplier or vendor to go out and buy the same materials and, and labor to build the project. Okay. It doesn't turn into a price until um, things like overhead and profit that the way, you know, contractors quite justifiably make some money on the project sure. comes later. Okay. That's a that's a fee that's added to the to the cost to turn it into a price. Now, that fee, in my understanding, has already been proposed to you as part of the competitive selection process mm -hmm. that you have. So that's sort of parked on the side. Yeah. Once you have the cost basis built up, um, you know, then you'll you'll add that to it and you'll have a price later. Sort of um, remember the old ads. um uh, you have a friend in the diamond business. I do. And they would and they would promise you a wholesale price. Yeah, yeah. Well, what that was supposed to mean is you would know their real cost. And, you know, obviously they would sell to you for a little bit more. Otherwise, they wouldn't have the fancy showroom and so forth. Sure. But it's the same idea. You, 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 you know, from a from a typical consumer's perspective, it means that you you get to know the real cost of the project, call it the dealer's invoice, whatever you want um, as an analogy. But you get to start with. The, the reality of what it costs and then turn it into a price to keep the design builder whole. Gotcha. So there's a lot of information to take in yeah. when you're sort of in the earlier stages in this process, like we are now for this project. You've seen a lot of these projects. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have maybe for people in a city or maybe our residents who are watching, mm -hmm. who are trying to understand this process, what advice do you have for those of us kind of in the starting stages of this? Well, recognize it's a process. It's a journey and it's going to have ups and downs um, throughout this pricing exercise. It's why it's called progressive design build. It's not going to always be pretty, but you have to have some trust in the process. Um, in today's construction environment, I don't think I'm speaking out of school to say it's really tough out there uh, right now with um, different forms of, um, you know, governmental regulations and import fees and, and things that might affect some of what you're buying. Um, an estimate um, based uh, on the original design might change as the design evolves. And so you've got to trust the process a little bit. you got to go through it. Um, it's sort of the school of hard knocks, but it's also proven to be very, very effective because you can talk about these things, you can figure them out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see um, owners at the end of the day being very happy with the end result as long as you can have patience to get there. That's it does take a little patience. Yeah. So. I like that it it feels like there's more transparency in this process for us, for the residents who, I mean, you know. And this is the big education uh, factor for owners. Uh, the mm -hmm. city such as, as Corpus Christi is you're going to see the numbers you've never seen in projects, whether it's a road project or um, building a, a, a new city hall or a convention center. You've never had the opportunity, unless you've used one of these delivery methods, to actually see the construction costs. And so there is a learning curve for the public side, but I think it's to your benefit right. that you get to see the numbers. That's great. Well, thank you. This yeah. has been very informative. I hope folks watching have learned a lot. I've certainly yep. learned a lot. Really appreciate you taking the time to do this. And thank you, you'll have a good journey. <laughs> Thanks for watching Inside City Hall. For more information on today's topics, visit our website and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay connected, stay informed, and stay tuned for the next Inside City Hall.